Hey there everyone, That Sexy Nerd is back again! And we're watching Nostalgia Critic and apparently he's done Beethoven. I, I remember, I just looked at this, I was so shocked. I was like, wow, how have you not done this movie yet? How have you not done? This is like the epitome of nostalgia for me. And I never even watched it. Yeah, it's like a, a Home Alone situation with me. I didn't watch... Uh, okay, I watched parts of it. I never officially watched the entire movie. And Home Alone took me forever to watch that movie too. I, I, don't, I still don't think I've actually watched it all the way through. Maybe I have. But yeah, it's, it, it's, it's really something that... that um, yeah, and this movie became a franchise and, and all that stuff, and I never really got interested in it, you know? Eh, maybe I saw it. I I, I, I don't know, maybe. Because I have a lot of weird history with a lot of movies that I love now, but I've still never seen Beethoven, and I'm like, wow. It, it's the epitome of nostalgia, but I've never seen it. It's, it's weird. It, I don't know if you guys have movies like that, or maybe I'm just a weird one. But I don't know. Uh... I wish I could say that I knew the plot to this movie, but I don't. <laughs> I, I think they just get the dog named Beethoven, a basset hound or whatever. Yeah, so it, it's it's crazy. Um, and the dog's big, so I don't know. Let's let's check it out. So please, smash that like button if you want to see more sexy, nerdy content. And subscribe if you think I deserve it. And let's do this thing, y'all. I guess I was the perfect age when Beethoven came out in 1992. Mm, 1992. Wow, I was only two years old, that's why. 10 years old, loved big dogs, and kind of giggled when I saw he was teamed up with the guy who sung a love ballad to Miss Piggy. It was what? a big hit at the box office, earned several sequels, and even got an animated series based off it. I saw that. Rotten Tomatoes is pretty universally hated. Really? Why? I mean, I guess I can see someone not getting into it, but has it really earned being disliked? I don't... Directed by Brian Levon, who if you watch my show, you're very familiar with. Yeah. I totally concede this is probably his best film. But really? does that make it a good film? I don't know, maybe my memory is fuzzy, but I remember this flick being brutally inoffensive. <laughs> a kid-friendly film that's corny without being cringy. And a lot of that, let's be honest, comes down to the well-picked cast. Hey, hey, Everybody, she, of course, remembers Charles hand. Rodin and the St. Bernard, but the other performances, while safe, are memorable. Basset Hound. I am sorry for saying that. Again, it's been a long day. Basset Hound. I cannot believe I confused a Basset Hound. What a St. Bernard. Wow. Everybody was saying that all the time, too. Just enough to make the joke work, but never go too over the top to make it uncomfortable. Unless that's the point of the performance. Yeah, we'll get to that in a bit. I can see most adults skipping the film, but oh. if you saw this advertised somewhere, isn't this about what you'd expect? Okay, it's not Marley and me, but it's the equivalent of oh. a TGIF movie. Hell, it's got some TGIF stars in it. I oh. personally remember it being fine for a children's flick, but maybe I need to watch it again. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's go back to a time when everybody loves Raymond did a crossover with the oh. X-Files. This is Beethoven. Huh. The film opens with Oliver Platt and Stanley Tucci as two bumbling dog smugglers. Admittedly not a good start. Hmm. As our main villain, a veterinarian named Dr. <laughs> Varnick, played by Dean Jones. Stanley Tucci? both the creepiest and non-creepiest line in any kid's film. I need puppies. puppies. How is anyone supposed to react to that? <laughs> Imagine this guy. Is that where that clip is from? I've always, see, look at that. I've never seen that movie. And I remember somebody like referencing that particular cl uh, clip. I think it was either Doug or I think it was Cinema Snob. I can't think of who it was right now. But you know, he just goes in and I need puppies. <laughs> it's so awkward and so intimidating for no reason. Walking into an animal shelter, somehow constantly backlit exactly how you see now, and he says, I need puppies. <laughs> Would you laugh your ass off or give him a puppy because you're afraid his snake arms might bite you? I grew up with Dean Jones in a lot Dean of Jones, yes. films where he's usually the main character but often teamed up with an animal sidekick. He plays this role like he wanted to eat every single one of those sidekicks. <laughs> He is literally a vet who tests weapons on animals and loves the hell out of it. 
in most movies, I'd say that's pretty stupid. But because it's Dean Jones lit like a Marvel villain with his stapler guy glasses talking like a bear choking on Patty and Selma. Well, he'll be a little groggy this evening. <laughs> it's some of the most enjoyable silly in the movie. <laughs> isn't quite as Dr. Giggles-ish as the credits Aww. roll, and we're introduced to Beethoven as a puppy, who's not having the best luck finding an owner. I got a junkyard. I need a big, mean junkyard dog. Man, Edward really oh. messed her up with that sculpture, didn't he? Whoa. Edward he Scissorhands. He pisses on her because, really, there's no other way this scene could go, and we cut to our burglars breaking in at night, stealing the puppies. This is done just <laughs> as the writer's credit is revealed. Edmund Dantes? Wow, he must have written it in his shit while staying at the Chateau d'If. If you're wondering why the Count of Monte Cristo wrote this, it turns out it's a pen name John Hughes used to use. Uh. And yes, it was very fun to type into Google why was John Hughes Edmund Dantes when he wrote Beethoven? It sounds like a drunk Mad Libs. <laughs> it turns out he did this whenever he thought he was writing weaker material. Ooh, man. Which is a great time to bring up. He left his name on all these yeah. movies. Two of the dogs escape, including Beethoven, and he roams the neighborhood stumbling across the Ooh, new puppy. Family, with Charles Grodin playing the father, George. A part of me does feel bad because this guy has been some of the best films ever made, and he's mainly known for this. <laughs> Hell, most of the headlines when he died really? labeled him as the star of Beethoven, but he really does play the part perfectly. Really? Never going too big or too subtle. Just look at this reaction when the paper boy gives him literal bad news. Aren't you excited to spend a movie with this guy? <laughs> the rest of the family isn't bad either. Again, very sitcom -y, but a harmless sitcom. Uh, the director did have an issue hiring Bonnie oh. Hunt as Alice, as there was an almost 30-year age difference between her and Grodin. But producer Ivan looks... Reitman said the chemistry was too good, and much like the main couple in Jurassic Park, both these dudes look a lot younger than they really are. They are, yeah. Can you what believe it? Grodin was 56 when he What? Made. To give you an idea, I'm 41 and I look older than him in this movie! <laughs> Beethoven sneaks into the room of the youngest kid, Emily, and the family thinks George bought the family a new pet. Mom, look, I dreamt I had a puppy and it came through! Really so cute! That line sounds weird. What? Bought a puppy and it came through! Ew. What? That line sounds weird as an adult. I dreamt I had a puppy and it came through! I dreamt Huckleberry Hound was the father and I might need to see a therapist, but still! As you'd imagine, George is less than happy to have a dog in the house. Snip, they lick, they chew, they drool, they scrap. Alice, they have parasites. Oh, God, yeah. Reitman was correct. These two really do have a believable chemistry. They do. They work really well off each other, even when they try to throw each other under the bus. She, she looks older, too. Go tell the kids. If anything, it'll put our pet ducks back in order. Look, they're so terrified. They're frozen in place. Alice <laughs> tries to tell them they can't have a dog. It goes about as well as you think. I mean, I've decided. I knew it. And she's from I the I knew nanny. anyone who bought me a nightgown from the Waltons wasn't going to let me have a pet. You better think of something to name because when I come home and he destroys my house, I want to know what to call him. He does change his mind, and they try to figure out what to call him. Well, I don't think words for parts of the body make really very good names. But he's got one of those I love. Okay, admittedly, a lot more people would like this film if it was just called Prick. <laughs> they decide on Beethoven because he barks to oh. Beethoven's music. I don't know, the writers from the 1800s make sense. And as he continues to grow, George's patience shrinks. Oh boy. Don't want another one of those rainy, perfectly sunny days. What, what the did the paper boy knock your sprinkler on the roof? Where's that water coming from? <laughs> oh boy. So yeah, okay, this isn't that funny a scene, but I like watching it because I like watching Grodin. His misery yeah. is just fun to watch. I feel like that's why I put up with a lot of stuff I've seen in this a million times. I legit like these actors and buy them as a family. They're the people you hang out with, okay, when all the other people you hang out with aren't around, but mm -hmm. you're friends with them for a reason. You still like them. Ladies and gentlemen, the screen debut of Joseph and Gordon Levitt. Holy crap. That was the screen debut of Joseph and Gordon Levitt. Beethoven tours the town that's so friendly to dogs, you'd swear Italian stereotypes will go bonkers trying to get him to bang, and we see he's still friends with the dog who originally broke him out. Thanks. What do you say about helping me find a home? Can't help you. It looked like you had a nice place to stay. Can't help you. I saved your life. Now you know better. Hmm. 
Allied George's air freshener company. God, I don't want to put my hand up there to find the red flag. He tries to sweet talk some investors, played by David Duchovny and Patricia Heaton. Ooh. I could use that in my beamer. I could use it in my beamer. Well, we feel a lot Is she of older than him? Can we not talk about putting things in people's beamers? You weird <laughs> dialogue. <laughs> Son Ted is mocked by some bullies, though do they really have much to make fun of him you for? I know. know I've seen this kid high-five some weird things along McDonald's oh. ads. All of a sudden, an overwhelming urge for some fries. Yes! But Beethoven scares them off, letting Ted take all the credit. <laughs> the hell? That's a great impression of how I look greeting myself in the morning. <laughs> Don't think I can show this scene without playing this clip. Someone's oh. kissing me. It must be a beautiful woman. Now, I'll make sweet love to you while keeping my eyes closed the whole time. What are you talking to? Uh. The most rewatched scene by Zoo File since Gene Wilder said hi to a sheep. Beethoven is taken to the evil vet who sees an opportunity to test a new weapon on larger dogs. It's because he needs puppies. There's been quite a bit written about certain behavioral problems with the breed. He suggests the idea that St. Bernards are overbred and can turn on their owner or their family in a heartbeat. First, first snarl, first any kind of weird on their owner or their family in a heartbeat. First, first snarl, first any kind of weirdness and he's gone. What should I watch for, hun? Is wearing my clothes around the house? I had one Ooh. night of passion. I mean horror! I get a babysitter for the kids, who I swear is a horizontal flip of Eddie McClurg, who doesn't keep an eye on everyone as Emily starts drowning in the pool while she continues to sing songs. You wanna give it a go? Gitchy, gitchy, ya, ya, da, da. You're not into it now, but wait until Baz Luhrmann whores it up, then you'll love it! Beethoven, of course, hears the cries and jumps in to save her. I think my favorite is he can somehow sense she's going to be in trouble miles away, even before she falls in. <laughs> My doggy sense is going! Woof! <laughs> After he does save her, she says he has to go back because he'll get in trouble. You better go home now. Mom said to stay in the backyard. What I wouldn't give for his tail to knock her back in and say, Oh, sorry! I'm supposed to be in the backyard, you ungrateful bitch. I thought he was gonna die! Now, we don't want you to get into trouble, so we'll let this be our little secret. To be fair, she's not exactly the best at looking after kids. <laughs> the babysitter is fired and the investors are brought over to their house for a barbecue. Where thankfully Beethoven understands business trade as he overhears their plan to take over George's job. We pull this off. We go, oh, Newton Auto Air Fresheners. Touch it. I believe this calls for a moi. No, after gin and tonics. <laughs> Just a moi then. Okay, moi. <laughs> Also, there's passive aggressive, and then there's aggressive aggressive. Alicia, Alan, can I have a refill, please? Oh, I just love these big dumb animals. Dogs obey so much better than children, don't they? Come here. Oh. Jeez. Also, what's with arson going down? It used to be everywhere. Remember arson? Beethoven <laughs> wraps the leash around her chair I'd and takes him for a run. He's an asshole. <laughs> more and more this movie isn't really fun to laugh at but it is fun to watch <laughs> like i love when you pause it you can clearly see how the effect is done and apparently george and alice were so shocked they switched actors in between scenes oh look at that. also i can't believe i've never noticed it all the times i've seen this scene bonnie hunt rather than help save these two instead saves the vegetable tray <laughs> what a nice little touch again it's not great but are you not entertained <laughs> i really don't like our dog Grodin and Hunt again share a really nice scene together, saying the usual stuff you hear in films like this about the overworking husband ignoring his family, but when they talk about it, you legit listen. My dream's going down the drain and you're worried about a dog. Your family's going down the drain and you're worried about a dream. Great, at least we see eye to eye. <laughs> After the most <laughs> fake game playing I've seen in a film for some time. At least mine. I get the next one. Okay, fine. Get that question block. It's not, not multiplayer. What are you doing? What? Granted, he could be playing the power glove, right? I've just never seen anyone actually do it. The evil vet drops mm. by, accompanied by his own evil music. Ah, oh. oh, this is Newton. <laughs> Sorry, our door creaks in the weirdest way. We're trying to fix it. 
He says he's following up on Beethoven's mm. rapey shots, but it's actually an attempt to frame him and make it look like he attacked him, even though the vet was the first one to strike first. I thought you, you hit Beethoven! Why would I hit Beethoven? Even when he's trying to sound reasonable, he sounds like a pirate gargling hunter as Thompson. <laughs> Once an animal crosses the line, attacks a human being, you can rest assured he'll do it again. By the way, I'm Batman, or whatever I'm trying to do with this voice. Mm. He says if Beethoven isn't handed over, he'll have to press charges, leaving George with no choice. Where are we going? Are we going to the Happy Factory where they make happy? No, thank you. I have enough happy. <laughs> Again, for as silly as the writing is, none of the actors are sleepwalking through this. They're giving the most that's asked of them in every scene. I know you won't believe me, but I don't want to do this. Understand? It's not your fault. Seriously, if he kept repeating that and Beethoven broke down in his arms, I would buy it. <laughs> oh. He hands him over to the evil vet, and his family looks at him like, well, he just took their dog to be put down. Dog killer. Ooh. That trademark Edmund Dantes writing. <laughs> On that note, I do legit like this line. Beethoven made this house real. He put the dents in it. To be fair, the <laughs> film had more than enough dents without his help. <laughs> they have a change of heart and go back to question the vet about what happened, only to find out they were duped. You hit me, I'll have you put in jail for assault and battery. <laughs> Whoa! Dad. Really, hon, I never found you more attractive. <laughs> I mean, I know our dog might be dead, but punching the guy from the Herbie movies gets me hot for some reason. <laughs> they try to climb the cops, but so they don't weird. give a shit. Shame this could have been an amazing crossover. And they follow the vet to where they're holding Beethoven. Turner and Hooch. I'm not back in I've never seen that either. Call the police. So, you know, they can laugh at us again. Why don't you say you're breaking into a place? They'll oddly enough get him down there. <laughs> Beethoven breaks loose and goes after oh. the thugs. And I'm a simple man. I laugh pretty hard when a guy has a high-pitched scream. <laughs> <laughs> but don't be reviewing movies in that voice or you'll look like a fool. <laughs> George breaks in just in time to save Beethoven while Beethoven's boyfriend, girlfriend, I never knew what they were, saves George. <laughs> Switchbone. <laughs> when you suddenly realize the only reason they gave him those Coke bottle glasses was to make his reaction funnier when he got bit in the nuts. <laughs> it kind of works. <laughs> kids drive into the place, resulting in one of the most surreal non-deaths in a kid's film. Oh my god! Great, I'm gonna be pissing Skittle colors for a week! And Beethoven is reunited with his family. The folks try to escape but get caught in a junkyard that honestly I always wondered if this lady owned. Uh, maybe. Oh. We'll be reunited in the imposters. <laughs> Of course, nobody dies, though granted, it is kind of worth it just to see this shot. But there is the question of what's to be done with all the other dogs. Good night, Mark. They need puppies. Good night, Sam. Oh, no. Good night, Beethoven's second. Good night, Beethoven's third. Good night, saddest Google search I've done asking how many Beethoven sequels there are. Good night, saddest results. Seven. And that was Beethoven. I can see why someone wouldn't get into it, but for a kids' film that's over 30 years old, I think it's okay. It's harmlessly wholesome, a film that doesn't try to be any more than what it is. <laughs> if Marley and Me is Toy Story 2, then this is Sing 2. It's in one ear and out the other, but for the short time it's in your brain, it's not a bad stay. Ew. Again, most of that is from the acting, which again isn't spectacular, but could have easily been half-assed, and it's nobody charming. ever really does that. Yes, I'll admit I would have liked it more if it was just a story about a big dog learning to adapt to a big family, but even when it does get weird with the evil vet, it's still an entertaining kind of weird. <laughs> and sometimes, that's okay. Not oh. that nostalgia, Craig, and excuse me, someone's at the door. Oh boy. Yeah, that was actually a lot of fun. It was it was actually funnier than I thought it was gonna be. And I was really I was really shocked. Um I should watch that movie. Never seen it. I, I, it's an idea, but I can't watch it now since I've watched this. But yeah, um, I don't even think I've seen this movie, honestly. I think I've only seen the sequels now that I think about it. Because I don't, I don't think I've recognized any of this. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, 
if he ever does a nostalgia critic or if you guys want me to review these movies in the in the in the comments, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll I'll, I'll do them because hey, yeah, it's time to catch up on childhood. <laughs> it's fun to catch up on childhood. Yeah. Um but yeah, also a uh, special announcement too. I am doing uh, Lord of the Rings month this month, so I will be doing. I will be releasing the nostalgia critic episode of Lord of the Rings uh, very soon. So stay tuned for that. And uh, oh, by the way, it will be on the rocks. So, <laughs> but anyway, please smash that like button if you want to see more sexy and dirty content, and subscribe if you think I deserve it. And I'll see you on the next video.